the, the standard approach to polycystic ovary syndrome and ovulation induction has been clomiphene citrate that goes back over 50 years. Clomiphene is an anti-estrogen class of drugs. It has been utilized for many, many years. Uh, and the mechanism is perhaps not so important for a, a few minute discussion, but the, the fundamental principles are that the use of clomiphene will induce an increase in follicle stimulating hormone, or FSH, secreted by the pituitary gland in the PCOS patient. And that is sort of the human reset button to start a cycle. It's very effective. Uh, in a lot of people in producing ovulation, the heavier one is, the less likely it is to work. It doesn't always produce pregnancies, but it has a good rate of ovulation. That's been around for many, many years. Uh, our group studied clomiphene citrate in comparison to a couple of other approaches. One was metformin, which uh, was utilized far more frequently in the early 2000s. And in a very large prospective study, we showed that clomiphene actually is more effective than metformin in inducing ovulation in clomiphene patients. And that was published actually now eight years ago in 2007. Uh, subsequently, there was another new drug on the block called letrozole or Femara, the trade name. And letrozole works in a different, by a different mechanism, but the way you take it is the same. You take a pill for five days or two pills for five days. Uh, and many people will ovulate. And we just published in November of 2014 a large study of 750 women who were randomized to either taking letrozole or clomiphene. And this study showed for the first time that there was a better drug. So letrozole, unless there's a contraindication, is now the treatment of choice for women with polycystic ovary syndrome in inducing ovulation. There are often questions about what the best way to take the medicine is. Uh, usually the best dose of medicine is the lowest dose that produces ovulation. So unlike other things that we typically do or see on a daily basis, more is not better. In fact, less is better. So the lowest dose of medication that will successfully induce ovulation is the best dose to take. Uh, as I mentioned, these medicines are used daily for five days, uh, the purpose being to create a, an increase in the FSH hormone to stimulate a follicle to develop and then ovulation to occur. At the end of every cycle, every woman ought to know if she ovulated or not. She'll obviously know if she's pregnant or not, but from the standpoint of good care, I think it's critically important for the woman to be able to say with 100% certainty, I know by virtue of some test or another, usually a progesterone level drawn in the latter part of the cycle, that this medication at this dose was successful in causing ovulation. Because if it was not, there is typically not a good reason to stay on the same dose. Rather, the dose should be changed, typically increased or having the duration lengthened. But every woman at the end of every cycle ought to know whether she ovulated. Uh, we typically monitor patients by giving them medication and doing an ultrasound about five days after the last pill. And we ought to be able to see a maturing follicle that's soon to ovulate. If we don't, if we see no response five, seven, or 10 days following the last pill. We don't wait for a period not to occur because we know it won't. Rather, we increase the dose at that time and by virtue of, doing, of taking that approach, we can far more rapidly get to a dose that will work or identify the fact that no dose will work.